Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. Today's been a little bit of a, a sad day for uh, my wife Sue because the, the car that she's owned for what, 10, 11, 12 years, uh, it's an old Toyota Starlet which she bought all those years ago for about £850, recently failed its MOT and uh, she realised that the cost of putting everything right would be more than really the car is worth now. So although it's been a faithful friend, got a friend to be all through those years, uh, the time has come to say goodbye. So uh, somebody came to pick it up um, earlier today. And so uh, it's a bit of a sad day to, to Sue, but uh, there you go. These things happen, don't they? And uh, there are worse things, I'm sure. So we're now down to being a one car family. Let's see how we get on. But of course, uh, we don't want to do too much driving uh, because uh, there seems to be a bit of a shortage in at least in one respect of fuel. A, friend, a Facebook friend of mine put on uh, a posting on today saying he's absolutely livid that, uh, that you can't find a petrol station near him. He lives up uh, in, uh, in the Southport area. He can't find any petrol station with petrol for him to fill his car up, so he's livid. And uh, of course, it's easy to blame things. From what I gather, and I'm not an expert on this matter, it seems that there is plenty of fuel at the refineries. One of the problems is uh, there seems to be a shortage of, of lorry drivers to get the fuel from the refineries to the petrol stations. And of course, typical we British, uh, as soon as anybody says there's a bit of a shortage of something, everybody well, lots of people go out and panic buy. So there's been queues at uh, petrol stations and it's been a bit chaotic. Um, I, it does really frustrate me, I must admit, when people go out and panic buy. I remember the issue with toilet rolls uh, some time ago and there were other issues. Well, let's face it, we can get by without most things. Although I admit that fuel is uh, important for many people. Uh, so uh, what do we do about it? Um, well, I think we can try as individuals not to hoard things. In fact, I had a, a bit of an idea um, that the church could put out a message that uh, churches have only a few seats left in church on a Sunday. So would that mean people would panic attend? Probably not, but it's a little bit of an idea that came into my mind. There's... Uh, a passage as I was thinking about this whole hoarding issue I was reminded of that story Jesus told of of a farmer he calls him a rich or the the parables called the parable of the rich fool uh, this man who was a farmer he had a bumper harvest so he says to himself um, I, I know I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones then I'll have room enough to store everything then I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink and be merry. So he's a kind of hoarder in a, a slightly different sense. But uh, the message that God has for him is this. You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get it all? A person is a fool, says Jesus, to store up earthly wealth but not have a rich relationship with God. And it's, uh, we can able to come back to that uh, message that, that, that the true fulfilment of li in life is not bound up with material possessions. And in fact, if we are hoarding things for ourselves, that's a very selfish action, isn't it? Because it affects others, there's less for others to go around. Paul writes to the Philippians, look not to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So uh, it's, it's fascinating isn't it, how the, the Christian faith, the teaching of Jesus impacts just about every area of our lives. How do we as Christians live out the life of, of disciples of Jesus? And, uh, and it's very practical. It's down to earth. It, if, affects our daily lives and so in this particular issue it's about how we respond to these uh, rumours of shortages and uh, probably excuse me <coughs> probably it's not through 
hoarding, taking things for ourselves, but uh, thinking about others, being sensible and reasonable and accepting that, you know, we can live without many of the things that we enjoy. But it's about having the mind of Christ, uh, look into the interest of others. Uh, I can understand my friend's frustration. You know, we're going on a, a bit of a journey in a few days time. And uh, fortunately, our car, my car is, is pretty full at the moment with, of petrol. So hopefully it'll get us from where we are to where we need to be. But uh, just, just a few thoughts for uh, our day and time. And uh, let's just ponder what is the right response for us in these situations as followers of Jesus. So God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.